Hello, brothers and sisters. This is Kevin Cosby in Louisville, Kentucky, St. Stephen Baptist Church, with another powerful point to ponder as we spend daily moments every week with the Master and the Word of God. Thank you so much for joining me. And uh, I'm excited about this week because we're going to discuss the entire week a very important theme in the Bible. In fact, it is so important, this particular theme, that the entire Christian faith is built on the premise of this theme. In fact, the entire universe is built on the premise, the truthfulness of this important theme. And this week, what we're going to talk about is the faithfulness of God, the faithfulness of God, the fact that we serve a God who is dependable and reliable. We serve a God who will do exactly what God says he will do. And that is critically important that we know that the God we serve and the Bible affirms consistently that God is faithful, faithful and why knowing that God is faithful is important to reducing stress and anxiety and worry and fear, especially as it relates to fear of the future. Let me tell you where you're going to live the, the rest of your life. You're going to live the rest of your life in the future. You may nostalgically reminisce about the past, but while you can reflect on the past, you will never live in the past. Your life will be a life, my life will be a life that is lived in the future. And we don't have to be worried or anxious about the future. Why? because the Bible teaches that God is a faithful God. It is the foundation of everything. And this week we're going to unpack what that means to know that God is faithful. And when we sang that song, great is thy faithfulness, O Lord, my Father, there is no shadow of turning with thee. Thou changest not thy compassions, they fail not. As thou hast been so forever will be great is thy faithfulness. Every time I wake up in the morning, new mercies I see. All I have ever needed, thy hands have provided. Great is thy faithfulness, Lord unto me. The faithfulness of God, not the faithfulness of people, not the faithfulness of government, not the faithfulness of friends, but what brings us true peace is knowing that God is faithful. Now, what does it mean to say that God is faithful? Well, it means three things. First of all, whenever I say, and this is what the Bible teaches, that God is faithful, it means that one, God sustains what God creates. So if God creates something, God always sustains what God creates. Now, have you ever just stopped to think about the faithfulness of God in the sustaining of nature? Nature happens with such abiding regularity and abiding consistency that we never think about how dependable nature is. In fact, you can set your watch to the reality that every 24 hours, the earth will rotate on its axis and it will revolve around its axis a full cycle of 24 hours. And so you can set your watch to that, your clocks to that. And there has not been a time when the earth has not rotated for 24 hours on its axis. You can't think of a day where it failed or it did not happen. And that is because of the faithfulness of God to sustain what God has created. Every 365 days, 
the earth makes its rotation around the sun. Every 365 days, that February will follow January, and March will follow February, and spring will come after winter, and summer will come after spring, and autumn and fall will come after summer, and winter will come again. And that's because the earth is revolving around the sun and does it every year, 365 days a year. There has never been a time when it has not happened. There is seven times more water in the world there than there is land. But although there's seven times more water than there is land, there's no tsunamis that take place on a regular basis in which the waters of the oceans engulf land masses because God put a line of demarcation between earth and land as God did in creation and said to water, come thus far and no further. And water speaks back to its creator and says, yes, Lord, God sustains everything. Whenever you want to boil water, you have to get that water up to at least 212 degrees Fahrenheit and it boils. When you want to freeze water, you want some ice, you have to take that same water and reduce its temperature to 32 degrees Fahrenheit and it freezes. And it happens and it happens with such regularity that we never think about how faithful God is in sustaining whatever God creates. The faithfulness of God, first of all, means that God sustains what God creates. Now, you may have some anxiety about a lot of things, but you don't have to have any anxiety about whether or not gravity will fail and you will float out into the oblivion of, the, of space because God is faithful and God sustains what God creates. Secondly, the faithfulness of God means this, that God does what God says. God does what God says. God told an old man by the name of Abraham at the age of 75 and his wife is 65, that even though your wife is unable to have children, if you obey me, I will give you a son. And Abraham trusted God. And although it seemed like the promise God made was denied, it was not denied, it was delayed because the delays of God are not the denials of God. At the, at the age of 100, and Sarah, his wife, at the age of 90, had a son by the name of Isaac. 25 years after God first made the promise. Why? Because God does what God says. Look, listen to what the word says in Exodus chapter 34 and verse 6. It says this. And he passed in front of Moses, proclaiming the Lord the Lord, the compassionate and gracious God, slow to anger, abounding in love and faithfulness. Abounding in what? God is abounding in love. And that's why God is slow to anger. That's why God is gracious. But God is also abounding in faithfulness, that God sustains what God creates. God does what God says. Now, sometimes when God says, I'm going to do something, we don't always see it in our generation. But Generations will pass and one generation will look back at some promises God made many generations earlier and say, you know what? God brought it to pass. Listen to Deuteronomy chapter seven and verse nine, where the writer says, know therefore that the Lord your God is God. He is the faithful God keeping his covenant of love to a thousand generations, which means that I don't always see the prosperities and blessings of God in my generation because a, 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 a day for God is like a thousand years or a thousand years rather is like a day. And I don't see it all in my generation. Like Martin Luther King Jr. once said, I may not get to the promised land with you, but we as a people shall get to the promised land. Uh, and that's how God is. God is faithful and does what God says. God sustains what God creates, God does what God says. So anything God says to you, God will do it because God is faithful. And then finally, the faithfulness of God means this. First of all, it means God sustains what God creates, God does what God says, and then finally God finishes whatever God starts. You know, 
we have a whole lot of people who are good starters. You know a lot of people who are good starters, but they're not good stayers. They can start, but they can't stay. Good starters, good stayers. How many people you know who are good starters on a diet, but they're not good stayers with a diet? How many people you know who are good starters with a project, but they're not good stayers with a project? How many people you know who are good starters in school, but they're not good stayers in school? One thing that you can depend on is whatever God says God is going to do, God only starts it, but God stays with it until it is completed. The value of a stamp on an envelope is that the stamp sticks to the envelope until the envelope reaches its destination. And that's why it reaches its destination because the stamp sticks to the envelope. And God sticks to you. God sticks to me until we arrive at the destination that God has for us. Even when we're faithless and even when we falter, God doesn't. Second Timothy chapter two and verse 13 says this. If we are faithless, which we are, Maybe it should read, since we are faithless, which we are, he remains faithful. He cannot disown himself, which is to say that it is just the nature of God to be faithful. It is the nature of fire to be hot. It's the nature of water to be wet. It's the nature of ice to be cold. It is the nature of God is the intrinsic nature sin qua non of God, the essential nature of God, to be faithful. And God is faithful. God will do exactly what God says. God, if God starts something, God will finish it. First Thessalonians chapter 5, verse 24 reads, the one who calls you is faithful and he will do it. Perhaps the greatest verse in the Bible in regards to the faithfulness of God was written by a depressed, defeated individual. It is attributed to Jeremiah, but scholars really don't know who wrote the book of Lamentations. But what they do know is why he wrote the book of Lamentations. The Babylonian empire had invaded Jerusalem. And when the Babylonian empire had invaded Jerusalem, they devastated the city and uprooted the residents and deported them to Babylon as prisoners of war and captives. And this writer who is writing in Lamentations is lamenting, which means to cry and to moan over the devastation that his country people are experiencing. Everything is wiped out. They have been completely devastated and plundered by the Babylonians. And he talks about his lament but then when he gets to chapter three, he starts to think about something. He says in chapter three, verse 21, he says this, this I recall to my mind, therefore I have hope. In other words, here is a great source of hope when you've been devastated by something. He says, it is by the Lord's mercies that we are not consumed which is to say that as bad as things are, they could be worse. And the only reasons why we're not consumed or completely wiped out is because of the Lord's mercies, because his compassions fail not that um, if it were not for the compassion of God, if it were not for the mercies of God, things could be much worse. He goes on to say about the mercies of God and the compassions of God, verse 23, they are new every morning, which means every time you wake up in the morning, God is going to bestow upon you new compassion and new mercies, and God's not gonna hold the mistakes and sins of yesterday and carry them over into a new day. God's gonna say, well, it's a new day, let me give you some new mercies. It's a new day, let me give you some new compassions. The writer says in verse 23, they are new every morning, and he shouts out, great is thy faithfulness. And you can shout out the same thing, that God, 
is faithful, which is to say that God always sustains what God creates. God always does what God says. And God always finishes what he starts. We're going to look at the faithfulness of God in some very important areas of your life. And it is the faithfulness of God, not people, but God. My hope is built on nothing less than Jesus' blood and righteousness. I dare not trust the sweetest frame, but wholly lean on Jesus' name, on Christ, the solid rock. Not my friends, not myself, but on Christ, the solid rock I stand, all of the ground is sinking sand. God is faithful. Let's pray together. Lord, our God, thank you for your faithfulness. We take for granted the stability of nature, that it works without our assistance because you are the faithful God. Thank you, Lord, that you never break a promise and you're always true to your word. We don't know always, Lord, how you will get us through, how you will make a way for us, but we do know one thing, that your mercies and compassions, they fail not, and they are new every morning. Help us to seize on this day something we all need, new mercy, new compassion. In Jesus' name, amen. Well, thank you for being with me for another powerful point to ponder. And look, if you don't have a church home, I'd like to extend you the invitation to become a part of St. Stephen Baptist Church. Uh, you don't have to live in Louisville to connect with the church. Everyone needs a church home. So we'd love to extend to you the invitation to become a part of our church fellowship. So contact us, email us, newstart at ssclive.org. We will get back with you. I hope that you have a, an enriched day, a blessed day. And I look forward to being with you tomorrow as we continue our theme, the faithfulness of God. But until then, during COVID-19, you know what I'm going to say. Uh, don't forget to stay safe and to stay sane. And if you can, stay home. Peace and blessings. I'll see you tomorrow.